Yo, yo, John Fitch here. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? It's uh, Sunday. It's Easter. It's Easter. And what better day than Easter to talk about winning and being a winner? Jesus was a winner. Jesus played to win. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's a t-shirt. Jesus played to win. Jesus didn't tap, I think. I think um, that's the word. That's my word. I was rocking out. I was jamming earlier. I always do that. I uh, I sound awesome before I go live. And then you have to suffer through my intro and extra. Money changer. What's the money changer? Yep. Jesus was a winner. That's right. We heard that. Jesus didn't tap. Jesus was a winner. Right. So what better day? Talk about winners. Easter. But yeah. We're talking about playing to win, man. That championship mindset. The thing that separates the champs, the placers, and the also rans. You know, the spectators, the taters, and the and the doers. It's okay to be a spectator sometimes. But you got to get after life. You got to get after things, right? <clears throat> Championship mindset. We're playing to win today. We're always playing to win. How's that sound? How's that sound, guys? I feel like you got it worked out. Good. Hmm. Play something mellow. Get us focused. All right. I didn't learn the rest of this song. Just uh, just learn this part of the intro. If I play it over and over and over enough times, it sounds like I know something. <clears throat> Do you guys know most most songs, most popular songs, are the same chord progression: C, G. A minor, F. It's like almost everything. It's crazy. It's crazy. Did you win, though? Did you win? That's what really matters, Satoshi. Today, playing to it. Says he took his mom to golf today. It's more valuable than Bitcoin. True. I'll give you that. Um, but did you play to win? Did you beat? Did you beat your mom? Did you beat your score? Did you beat your top score? Do I have a problem? I don't know if I have a problem. Should I sing a song? You want a song? Do I need to sing a song? Sing a song. I forgot what I was gonna sing. <laughs> my mom's old bro of course i won all right well it's all right man you played to win you played to win oh man okay guys Talking away, I don't know what I'm gonna say. Say it anyway. Day's just another day to find me shying away. I'll be coming for your love, okay? 
Sorry, take on me, take on me, take on me, oh, take on me, I'll be gone in a day or two. The things you say, is it a lie or just to play my cards away? Slowly learning that life is okay. Hey, after her, uh, something, I'll be coming for you anyway. Take on me, take on me, take me on, take on me, I'll be done. In the day oh, ooh. <laughs> All right. I can't mess up a few times I can play him. <sighs> okay. All right. All right, guys. Playing to win. I was playing to win. I was playing to win. I was playing to win. Even though I mess up, it's okay. I'm playing to win. Even when I'm goofing around. When I play my sons in chess, it's on, bro. It's on. <clears throat> like, I ain't gonna let you I ain't gonna let you beat me. I ain't gonna let you beat me, son. You gotta bring that. You gotta bring that heat. Smash him. Smash him and uh whatever. Whether it's checkers, chess. We've been playing a lot of chess. I didn't play chess when I was growing up. I wish I would have. So my oldest son got uh he got into it. He got into it at school. And that made it easy for us to start playing more and he was interested in it. And they're they're not I mean, I'm not great, so like they're actually pretty pretty hard to beat <laughs> for me. <laughs> so I suck. I suck. Uh Uncle Mo came, Coach Mo came, Coach Mo was Dicing it up though. He was he was handling them pretty good. Cause they got that kid thing, you know. Uh if it's not looking good for them early on, they lose interest, they get bored, and they start doing other stuff, playing with other games. So there's a lot of games that, that finish halfway, halfway done. Okay. So I uh I looked I looked at some stuff today, guys. Uh and it's a it's a huge thing, I think. The playing to win mindset. Not everybody I mean some I mean some beef sticks and drinking whiskey. Right? Because we're playing to win here. Right. It's uh it's a difference between getting by and ultimate success. Being a champ and being somebody who took part. I wrestled in high school versus I I lettered in college, right? I was a national champ. I went to the Olympics, which also shout out to a uh, uh, former guest, Joe. Oh, I forgot to bring the thing up. <clears throat> but they had the uh, Olympic trials yesterday. <clears throat> but, okay. Um, yeah, so there's two, there's two attitudes that go along with 
success and uh, you know playing to win and and the uh, the the just playing not to lose type of stuff. It doesn't really matter what industry you're in, what you're doing, what sport. Everything's a competition. Okay, everything's a competition because everything's everything breaks down to survival and reproduction. So if you're not if you're not champ of some hierarchy, if you're not winning at some hierarchy, you're gonna have a hard time uh, surviving and reproducing. Okay. So you need to play to win all the time. Um, so your intent and attitude are going to be a big factor in, it, you know, playing to win, whether or not you're playing to win and how successful you are at playing to win. If, if your intent is, to just be on the team, right? And of course, I'll go from a lot of, uh, oh yeah, Jordan Oliver. I totally mind blank. Jordan Iron, Kyle Dake also. Dake also made it. Um, I was kind of big. Was that an upset? Did he was that an upset? Because they, you know, him and Burroughs. You know, Burroughs is an Olympian, so Olympic medalist. Jordan Oliver, yeah, I had him on. Um. Yep, Jordan Burroughs. So that yeah, so a lot of guys, you know, their 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 intent is just to be on the team. And I'm using sports analogy because that's that's something I have a lot of experience with is, is sports and sports teams and people competing in those sports teams. And I think it doesn't matter what you're doing, the competition translates over because I've done other things and what you know, I think I think sports are a nice uh, tool to look at because they're they're kind of compacted and isolated and observed from all angles. But like it's all competition. Anybody who's trying to get up, anybody who's in business and trying to make money, anybody's trying to get over. We've been over this. Everything's pro wrestling, so everybody's trying to get over. If you're not getting over, you're the mark. You're the mark. You're getting over. So you need to start competing. <clears throat> And um, if you don't have the attitude of somebody who's there to win, uh, what's the point? What's the point? You're, you're going to end up playing defensively. You're going you're gonna, to uh, hold yourself back. You're not going to put full, a full effort. You're not going to put full effort out there because <clears throat> you just don't want to lose what you have. It's a scarcity mindset. It comes from scarcity. And it, it's a part of that survival instincts you have you know you're alive right now with this these things you have don't lose what you have survive i'm not saying it's a good or bad thing recognize what it is okay it's your body it's your biology trying to tell you to survive you're already surviving you're fine you're fine don't worry about it take the risk because that's where the reward is it's right the risk is the dragon you got to slay the dragon it's it's hard and it's scary, but dragons have treasure. Sometimes they got princesses. Sometimes they got princesses, not just a princess. That's good. <coughs> oh man, sorry guys. I'm gonna cough in your ears. Um okay. Um and yeah, there was a uh Harvard Business Review did a study. If I, where was it? Where was it? March 2013. They noted that leaders uh, who play not to lose worry about what might go wrong if they don't work hard enough or aren't careful enough. They are vigilant and play to not lose, to hang on to what they have, to maintain status quo. Ooh, it sound familiar? You got trigger any of you guys? Trying to maintain the status quo. You don't want to lose what you have. This is good. We're okay here. We're fine here. Don't worry about the future. Just stay right here. You can't just stay right here. You got to do work. You got to do work. Jack. Um, yes. This is on a bunch of platforms. I, I can't even count how many. Welcome. Force your will. Yes, this is maintaining your frame. Forcing your will. That's what that is. Like your your frame is your will. 
Who are you? How are you living your life? What do you accept in your life? You, you're, you get what you accept. More like a cigar. <sighs> playing to win. When uh, you're playing to win, man, you are taking categorically, you know, rewarding risks. You're not, you're not try to fail at all costs. You're not going to push yourself till you break down, your body hurts, your body fails. You're not going to push your team <clears throat> in your business world <clears throat> so hard that they can't keep pace, they can't sleep, they can't live their life and have fun. That's not something that you want to be doing. Uh, you take mitigated risks, but you take risk. You have to Go for the win. You're trying to get that win. Uh, one of the problems with uh, playing not to lose is that you're you're overly cautious. You're going to hold back uh, because you're afraid of making mistakes, but holding back usually leads to mistakes. Instead of doing the things you you're good at, you know how to do. You've been trained to do. You you sit on the sideline and you uh, you wait and you wait and you wait and then you react or you don't do anything, and you're not doing anything as your action. That's the worst. It's, uh, you know, that's the old baseball analogy. You go up to the plate and you, you go down without even swinging. We used to get in trouble in uh, T ball and not T ball, <laughs> but you know, lob ball, whatever. You used to get in trouble <clears throat> if you got struck out and not swinging. What a waste. Just go stand by the fence, wallflower. Uh, you know, <clears throat> if you're prepared, if you've done the work, you shouldn't have any fear when you're there, go for it, go for it. The risks aren't going to be that big of a deal. You're afraid of failure, afraid of failure. And then you're actually, uh, creating more problems for yourself and your failure. Let's look. I've got some uh, articles to share, I think. This one, okay, great. We're gonna look at eight, eight ways uh, you can you can get yourself playing to win, playing to win, not not playing to not lose. All right, folks. I got the transition much smoother now. Here we go. Playing to win. She's got eight eight dealios here. Is that who who this was? I can't remember who wrote this. Whatever. <clears throat> There's eight points here. Let's go over these and see if you agree with them. Uh, number one, throw your best and brightest. <clears throat> throw your best and brightest people at opportunities. Pull them out of situations they're playing uh, to protect, maintain status quo. Okay. Uh, throw your best price. Yeah. Go big. Go big. I think that's what that is. Go big. Go big. Why not? Go all out. If you're going to do it, freaking do it. Uh, when I decided to start fighting, I wasn't like, eh, I'm going to get a full-time job as a teacher. And then, <clears throat> you know, uh, I'll have I'll have a few nights a week to uh, train and then you know every once in a while maybe i'll have a fight on the weekend we'll see how it goes that's not that's not that wasn't cutting it that wasn't going to cut it so i went big i went big and i put my all into it everything everything i mean uh rely on that one thing i hope that uh that's right i think that's right that's right on that's spot on cool this is good smash the like button guys do it do it now. Um, I'll move that up for a second. Well, 
Look at this. Number two, steal ideas from other successful organizations. Steal. Um, yeah, play to win. Like, do what it takes. <laughs> steal. Like, see, if your opponent is doing something and is successful with it, do it. Steal it. <laughs> like, you're like, oh, wow. Like, this guy's got a great cardio program. He never gets tired. Yoink. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I agree with that. Steal. Hmm, that's good. Um, <clears throat> whatever it takes. Get it done. <laughs> Number three, look for hunger and drive. Find individuals hungry to uh, make a difference. Give them opportunity. They'll take more risk and work harder than comfortable long-termers. Give young players a chance. This is a little age discrimination, I think. <sighs> they don't have to be young, <clears throat> but hungry. Hungry makes a difference. If you're in a sport, you want a coach who's hungry. We talked about coaches last week. You want teammates who are hungry. You want you want a fan base that's hungry. You want people around you who, who are hungry and are driven to find goals. This was, I hate to say it, when I was at Purdue, I had a trouble with this because there's a lot of guys who were just, they were, they were wrestling because it was fun. And they wanted to do something fun in college, but they weren't there to like be uh, um, uh, Kale Sanderson. You know, they weren't there to like, I want to be the greatest. And I kind of wish I could have found that group. I had a great time, had a lot of fun, I learned a lot of lessons. But like, you know, like that Iowa mentality or the guys at Minnesota at the time, the guys who were. You know, training hardcore all year round. I wonder, like, what could have been if I had more of that. Although I did, I had some, I had some good times. I had some really good times at Purdue. I won't say that I did not. <laughs> Chasing big girls, drinking beers, good times, man. It was good. I got nothing bad to say. Um, let's get back to that. I like how you can move the thing now. Shout out to Restream upgrading. Okay, uh, number four trim the fat from established programs and give it a new trim the fat. I like that. Okay, so when you're playing to win, trim the fat, get rid of the bullshit, get the bullshit out your life. If you're really playing to win. If you are serious about whether it's a job or sports performance, whatever, like if you're playing Call of Duty till three in the morning, nights before work or whatever shit you got to do, probably not the best for you. If you're smoking a lot of weed and you're not on point and getting shit done, if you're getting, if you're handling everything, do what you want. If you're handling it, if you got your life where you want it, do what you want. Okay. But if you're just getting by, if you're not playing to win, <clears throat> cut the bullshit out of your life. That's really, really honestly, step one, if you're looking to upgrade your life, you try to make things better for yourself, make things easier, life easier for you. Usually, instead of adding shit to do, the best thing to do is to cut shit out. Get it out. <laughs> Trim the fat. I like this. This is a good one. Trim the fat. This is more towards like, business professionals and and running a business but this works perfect for everything else it's, it's all the same it doesn't matter what you're trying to do man you're playing to win you're not it's all win or lose bro that's what matters it's not that woo, -woo bs in your fields bro your fields don't pay bills <sighs> number five Coach and train your greatest opportunities. Develop people who can be, who can develop opportunities, generic leadership, developments, yields, generic results. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I guess. I'm not a big uh, business guy, so. 
this makes sense. You'd want people, you want people around you. It's more of a network thing, I would think. Uh, if you can teach people beneath you to like do shit for you, obviously, but you know, you want a strong network that's going to create a lot of opportunities for you. If you can train people into how to get those networks, it's even better. I got a question mark on that one. I'm not knowledgeable enough in the business world yet. <laughs> I just use to punch people in the face. Uh, allocate number six, allocate adequate resources. Realize it takes more to build an innovated, build and innovate than it does to maintain. Uh, yeah, allocate resources. You need to find a good gym, good training. <coughs> you need to find a good uh, place to do your business, a good city to do your business. You know, if you got a shitty location, there's certain businesses you're just not going to be able to do. Um, yeah, pretty basic. Get the shit you need. Get the shit you need. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, number seven, get out of the way. Yeah. Let your best and brightest run with it. Autonomy and still ownership. Get out of the way. This is something I've been learning to do a lot of lately is other business endeavors giving people assignments and letting them do it because <laughs> i like i'm just i'm used to doing things all myself i like things done a certain way so uh being able to tell somebody how to do something in the way you want it done and then being able to get it done it's a new thing for me and it saves a shitload of time so a shitload of time when you can get good people to work for you Shit a lot of time. And then number eight this is a good one. And you don't want to forget this. Sometimes I would forget this. But number eight, man, celebrate the victories. Celebrate them often. Celebrate them often and publicly. Celebrate. Celebrate. Yeah. That was a strong eight things. Celebrate those victories, guys. It's good to work hard. It's good to make integral, intramental, integral, 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 intramental <laughs> words. Words are hard today. Making small levels up, small adjustments, getting a little bit better all the time. You got to step back, man. Cheers yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a cheers. Pour yourself a good whiskey. Have yourself a cigar, some cannabis, a little beef stick. How you scared, man? You're doing it. Mm. Oh, I'm being flattered. Whatever these guys did in college, very few were able to reach the level of success. John Fitch. I think I think part of that was because I didn't I didn't find the uh, the training that I needed at the time, you know, for college. Like I wanted to be like you know the Dan Gable or Kale Sanderson. I wanted to like put the type of work on. I just didn't have the people around me to do it. And when I moved to California, I isolated myself again. Like it was more individual with MMA. So like it didn't matter if the team didn't show up. Like I could get coaches to do stuff with me early on. And then there was always people around usually that wanted to work out. There's always somebody who wanted to roll or somebody who wanted to spar or somebody who could hold mitts. So like as long as I just kept showing up at the gym, there's always somebody to work with. So I started to get that from AKA where I didn't get that really with the Purdue. Cause that man, dude, I used to go, I used to go and in between classes when I had breaks, I would go and put on my wrestling gear and hang out in the wrestling room because the coaches sometimes would have workouts with other guys and I would, I would be there and then I would jump in in order to be like the drill dummy. <laughs> so I could be the uke. So I would get extra coaching in 
because I wasn't like a blue chip guy. I wasn't the guy who they put all the money into and were, were banking on being all American and doing whatever. So I would like to hang out. Sometimes I just do the bike, <laughs> you know, uh, listen to some tunes and then stretch out. And if nobody showed up, I'd, I'd go, by, go to my next class. No oh, man, Satoshi, you uh, you get up at six a.m. every morning. I had a long break where I got up late, but like I'm back to getting up early again. And I used to get up early when when I had school and wrestling. We used to go and run in the morning. So we would go to school. School started like at seven thirty, seven twenty, seven twenty. I think it was the time to start in the morning. So we would go in, we would run in the morning for like 20 minutes hard. It was like this the outside around the thing. <laughs> it was the uh, basketball arena area. But you would run the straight on the bottom, and you run upstairs, and then run the, up, the top part portion, <clears throat> and then run down, and then run across, and up, and then across, and then down. So, yeah, it was a good run. We'd run hard for 20 minutes and try to get as many laps as we could. I would show up, <clears throat> and then uh, the other guys would show up too. And like, I'd have to wait outside, and the janitors would let me in. I don't know if he could do that today with the uh, the school shootings and shit. Yeah, I was playing to win. I used to. Uh, I think I heard something about the Herschel Walker thing about push ups and sit ups. I wasn't doing that many, but I was doing close to five. I was doing about five hundred a day. I'm pretty sure it was five hundred a day. And I would just, I would do him in between shows, commercials, practice. He'd be showing a move that I already knew. So I'd, I'd pump out push-ups and my coach would show him moves. And then I'd go and drill the shit out of the moves when it's time to go. More push-ups. <sighs> Jack. What's up? MMA Press Room says he's down 236 to 183. Fitch, I'm looking like a lean, mean fighting machine, baby. Did you use the Wake Up Bible? Using the Wake Up Bible? How'd that, how's that working out? Oh, man. Let's see here. <sighs> Celebrate your victories, gentlemen. It's a big takeaway there. Let's look at some more <clears throat> info I found here. I'm going to share this one. This is MJ. And uh, I'm not a basketball guy, but I can't not just, like, identify with so much of what this guy says and did. <laughs> He was just, he was on another level. He makes me look like a sane person. I don't feel bad at all for anything because I feel like he was the next level, which is why he won so much more, probably. Uh, playing to win versus playing not to lose. Who is this? Uh, I don't know who's playing this. Uh, I don't know. He, this is a Michael Jordan quote, though, that I like here. You can see I play to win, whether during practice or a real game, and I will not let anything get in the way of me and my competitive enthusiasm to win. Michael Jordan. Michael D. Michael Jordan. I cannot help but agree with this totally. <clears throat> and it doesn't mean like some people, I don't know, people who badmouth competition. It's like playing to win, like wanting to win, like. Being a, a crybaby or a bitch about losing, that's a totally different thing. But like being competitive about, I want to win this. I'm, I'm, I'm putting faith in myself and my abilities and my intelligence to orchestrate a victory, getting things done. I don't see any where you're playing darts, 
flipping quarters, rock, paper, scissors, wrestling match, whatever. Basketball game, game of horse, right? <sighs> Nothing wrong with it at all. Nothing wrong at all. It's good to be competitive. Like, it's, it gets your blood going. Um, what was it that I wanted to see in here? Yes. They talk about the psychology of looking at competition in the sense of a challenge versus a threat. I think this is kind of it's kind of cool. Okay. I guess we'll read a little bit of this to you. See if you want to read it too. Let's see. Bah. Not losing is a threat, right? In the book Top Dog, a study was done on how different the results are based on viewing a test as a threat or a challenge. The study was done by Alter and Aronson, 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 with Princeton undergrads. The researchers presented the students with a test of GRE questions. For half the students, the questions were presented in a threat context. They were a test of the students' ability, a judgment on whether they truly belonged at Princeton. The other students got the same questions, but in a challenge context. The test was titled Intellectual Challenge Questionnaire, and the questions were construed as brain teachers. Nobody was expected to solve all of them, or didn't expect all, them all. Uh, in the threat context, the Princeton undergrads got 72% correct. In the challenge context, they got 90% correct. Ooh. So there's absolutely nothing different in those questions. They're the exact same questions. They ask those kids the exact same questions. One group got 90% correct. The other group got 72% correct. All because they thought it was a threat. They're being threatened. Are you are you stupid? If you get these wrong, you're stupid. That whole mindset is enough to um rot people. Right? It's it's loser, loser, scarcity mindset, loser, losing them. Beta mindset. Don't do it, guys. Don't be there. You don't gotta do it. You don't gotta be there. Oh, this, yeah, that's that's a big part of it. Tiger Wood getting caught. <clears throat> I bet there's a lot of stuff going on too uh, that drove him into. Like, I doubt his wife was giving him what he wanted at home. That's why he was running around. But yeah. Yep, if you're unwilling to learn, you might be a loser, especially from a loss. A lot of times that happens, though, from people who have ego investments in a certain mindset or a certain way. Put them in this way, and they can't let go of it. Hmm. Okay, so what else we have? Uh, yep, yeah, that's a good one. That was good one. I guess more. Look at some of the differences in mindset, I think, here. All right, here's a nice little graph on this bad boy. Dun, dun, dun. You know, I love graphs. 
Mm, the power of a winning mindset. Here we go. This bro, Richard. Dick Mara. Dick Mara. Yeah. Uh, he's got a nice little graph down here. I like how he puts this. Uh, playing to win is entirely different than playing not to lose. They are both powerful mindsets, but the actions are different. I refer to the playing not to lose mindset as least mode and playing to win mindset as beast mode. Yeah. Uh, fuck yeah. Beast mode, bitch. Uh, this dude's raging. Uh, in my leadership uh, Okay. So here we go. Playing to win. Uh, playing not to lose. Playing to win. Least mode. Least mode. Uh, or uh, soy. You should call this the soy. The soy way. Uh, playing defensive. Doing the minimal effort to avoid losing. Living at home, letting your parents pay for everything, just doing video games all fucking day, watching porn, ooh, not talking to girls. Hmm. Hmm. Soy. Lack of accountability. Not my fault. Somebody oppressed me. Meh, it's your fault. Your privilege. Meh. Soy. <sighs> Disbelief. <gasps> I cannot believe that things are this way. Oh, what a terrible reality. Whatever. Uh, excuses. <laughs> Stupid voice, everyone. Excuses, quick to blame others. That's kind of the same as that. Kind of lack of accountability. It was smush those together. Reactive, passive, lets things happen to them. Prevention focus. I don't want that to happen. Leave it. Leave me alone. I hope nothing happens. I hope nothing happens. Rather than I wish a motherfucker would. I smoke my eyeball. It's the second most painful thing a man can experience. Uh, conservative. Conservative. How? Hmm. Conservative, safe, tries to play it safe. Playing it safe. I don't know if that's the same thing as conservative. Conservative is such a morphed word nowadays, anyways. What the fuck is conservative? Conserve. Uh, risk adverse. So, yeah, why do you have. <clears throat> so, I, don't know. I don't know about this guy's list. I don't know, Dick. Uh, some of them are good, though. Good enough mindset. Oh, I'm good enough. I got some porn. I got some video games. I got hot pockets. Mom pays the rent. Mm. Mm. Uh, sees goals as responsibilities. This responsibilities are freedoms, bro. Playing for the sake of obligation. Mom asked me to. Um... Now let's do the playing to win. Beast mode, mother grabbers. Playing offensive, going after it, getting what you want. Do whatever it takes to win. Get them, head butts, eye pokes, growing strikes. Win, W I N. Encounter, it's your fault your fault you did it you gotta deal with it conviction yep life is hard good no excuses mm -hmm. life is hard you make mistakes keep going proactive you're actively doing shit you get shit done uh lifting weights you're fighting against gravity you're not gonna let gravity win you're not gravity's bitch Fuck gravity. Achievements focused, right? You want shit. You're going to work for it. It's right there in front of you. Set up goals and get there. Aggressive, relentless, 
yeah, you're going to get there no matter what. Get knocked down, don't matter. Face gets broken, keep moving, keep moving forward. You go bankrupt, so what? You get money from somebody else. You get new investors, a new project. Make money a different way. Boom, you're the man. Risk taking. Yep, <clears throat> take the risk. Do it. Don't uh, take a dumb risk, but you know, you know, mitigate a risk. Get it right. Get it right mindset. Yes, do it right the first time. Quit effing around, people. Quit effing around with my time. This is the way it's done. Do it. Get it done. Uh, see goals as a path to advancement. Of course, absolutely. Playing for potential gain or upside. Everything you do. Everything you play for, everything you have an opportunity to win at is all upside. It's all upside. You're only going to benefit and your life is only going to be better if you work hard and you play to win. I don't care if you're playing poker, chess, darts, throwing hatchets. Throwing hatchets? Oh, bitch. It's on. We'll go throw some hatchets sometime. We need to get a Smash Society. Bay Area meet up together, throw some mother grabbing hatchets. <clears throat> Let's do it. I want to get a little bit of land so I can build my own hatchet place. Oh, I got a bunch of comments, bunch of comments. Okie dokie. Matt W, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Soy, soy mode, 100%. Stay away from the soy. Stay away from the soy mode. Like Nietzsche. Like Nietzsche had some fun things to say. At the end of the day... He was a blue pilled soy boy. 100%. Made some good points. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, he was a simp. Nietzsche was a simp. Van Gogh was a simp. We need to be careful with who we idolize. <laughs> go to my. Go to my. Instagram, the Stones Company, the Stones Company. Go to my website. Go to my website, but my we go to my website, johnfish.net. Johnfish.net has a store, and you can see my wares for the Mary Jane. Satoshi says, I just walked through life expecting the best and prepared for the worst. I tried to practice peace. Life's pretty great. It's not a terrible way, but I mean, you're, you're not, you don't think you're playing to win. You don't think you're playing to win. You're really just like, uh, I'll just show up, see what happens. You sure? You sure you're not selling yourself short? You know, expecting the best, prepared for the worst. Prepared for the worst, it sounds like you're competing. Mm -hmm. Right, because the worst is like you lose, you're a loser. Is it not the worst? The worst is being a loser. What could be worse than being a loser? <laughs> is there is there a thing worse than being a loser? Beast mode this year. Boom. Get it. I need to get I need to get my beast mode back on. Might quit your job. Oh yeah, <clears throat> get it done, bro. I'm uh, we getting big, guys. I was two thirty today. Two thirty today. <laughs> I'm not like fat, but like I'm getting big, dude. My clothes don't fit anymore. 
Calculated risk. You got that right. I'm getting kind of uh, not fat. I'm just getting big. I'm getting hefty. Yeah, play to win. Always play to win. Baby steps is all you can do. Yes, what about Bob fans? <laughs> baby steps. It's baby steps. Okay, we're done with that guy's thing, I believe. Yep, there it is. There we go. Oh, I can do that? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yep. I keep doing it. BJJ learning BJJ in thirty. Uh, man, like it's good to learn a lot of techniques, but you really want to find your game. You want to find your system that you're comfortable with, that your body complements or complements your body, your flexibility, your strengths. You don't need to know everything. If you if you are not flexible, you don't need to be fucking around with rubber guard and <laughs> bendy leg shit. <clears throat> um, figure out what works good for you and get really good at those things. And then you learn all the other stuff for fun. Get good at it. Uh, be able to do them in order to fully appreciate the art. And defensively, you need to know how to do the stuff to be able to defend it. Man, you got land in Idaho. Man, I'm, I'm here till the kids are, uh, till the kids are gone, you know. I do not cut my own hair. Uh, G fade game, G underscore fade game on Instagram. He cuts my hair. Does a great job. Really great job. Cannabis expert. Yes. I'll take you. You. We can go through a black belt session and see if you survive. Black belt session in cannabis. And then I'll take you on a course of whiskey. Mm. I should do a whiskey course, huh? Teach you guys all about whiskey. Yeah, you got it, bro. Cut your ear off for a chick. Can't be more simp than that. Too many goals at once, yes, can be a problem. Uh, humans do best when they focus on one thing at a time, rather than multitasking. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I still practice peace, but if war comes, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready, bro. It's pretty bad. Masculinity crisis is pretty bad. I got the uh, Smash Society on Patreon is there to help help get the uh, masculine renaissance going back again. How many hours of wrestling? Probably only two hours, five days a week. Probably. Oh, all right. Hey, guys, hold on. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, five days a week, 
two hours, hour and a half, two hours. That's about it. And then, like, uh, wrestling wasn't a big focus of mine through high school. <sighs> wrestling was a secondary way for me to get more time in the weight room, more time to get exercise. I, I, I like battling head to head with people, and there was nothing else to do in the winter time. So when football was over, it's like, what are you going to do? Play basketball? I wasn't really tall enough to play basketball, and I wasn't that into it to get good enough to to play. So wrestling was where it was at. I could do battle in the winter. I wasn't cutting weight. I didn't cut weight in high school. I My freshman year of high school, I, I, uh, I wrestled 172. But there was a weight class, 165. I, I could have made it. I could have cut weight pretty easily and made that weight class and and probably started my freshman year. But wrestling wasn't my sport. If wrestling was my sport, I probably would have wrestled like 157 or 150 something. You know, like <clears throat> I didn't do freestyle until junior high. And I wasn't like super into that. I didn't even know. Like, I didn't qualify for the junior national team until my senior year, and I didn't know that you could pay your way on. <laughs> there are kids on for like five years, and you could tell like they were good because they, they work with high level people a lot because they their their parents paid the way. It was like five hundred bucks or something at the time. It's probably like a thousand now, but like <sighs> to pay your way on to the kids, so you didn't have to win. You could just pay your way on to be on the national team because they would make money that way. But, like, I didn't even know that. It could have probably helped out a lot. <laughs> yep, I won against BJ. Definitely won against BJ. I also definitely won against uh, Rory. Yes. Whiskey and weed is a challenge. Yep. Contest of champions. Look to it. I've got some uh I've got some decent ones. This one's okay. Airstone Sea Cask. Uh this is Scotch Scotch Whiskey. I think this is a lowland Scotch whiskey. Let's try the lowlands. Uh and this Liss more Single Scotch whiskey. Also, um, this might also be a little, a little land. No, this is by side. My bad. It says so. Unbelievable. This is by side. That was a, like some kind of sale. 15 bucks, dude. Can't beat that. Um, Khabib or John? I don't know. I'm kind of awesome. I was fighting against people and... Uh, the UFC. Most people, most people don't fight against them. Vodka makes you crazy. Vodka make tastes like bug spray. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I say George. George one could be two. And that's that's because I think I think George's level of competition, the people that he faced was higher. That's why. You could you can don't at me. Don't at me. Oh, the Diaz and Edwards fight. I think uh Edwards is gonna beat him up. I think Diaz is had too much damage done. He got thumped. He got Molly whopped. He got Molly whopped by uh, um, Masvidal, he got my whopped. Sorry, he got Masvidal whopped. Masvidal whopped. So, like, okay, I hope, I hope uh, Edwards makes some money off this. Edwards needs some new uh marketing strategies, though, because he's not going to get where he wants to just win in fights. <laughs> you think this is a sport or something? Jeez. <sighs> ah. Call me Edwards. I'll get you hooked up.
My high school weight class, I, I wrestled 172 my freshman year. And then it was uh, 189, 185 to 189 because they moved it once. So, yeah. Pretty much the same. I was the same size from uh, 16 until 40, pretty much. Like I got to about two, 204 around football time because I was eating a lot, Snickers bars and whatever I could just to put on size for football and lifting. Like 205 is the biggest I ever got weighed, but I was probably wearing my shoes. Um, but yeah, I'm big now. I'm, I weigh 230 today, guys. 230. Jesus. Hi, you're 130 in high school, 85 now. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't, I was one of the smaller ones in my family. 22 grandsons on the Fitch side. I was one of the runts. I was too. I was too. Uh, dark, ah, uh, whiskeys. I like whiskeys. I've been a fan of whiskeys. Um, I've been uh, familiarizing myself with the Scottish whiskeys and the different lands. There's like what four or five different like regions, and they have different distinct tastes. Each one. The differences between Irish whiskey and American whiskey, bourbon, the rye. There's some good Japanese whiskeys out there. Um, even Taiwan. Taiwan had some whiskeys now, I think. Every once in a while, there'll be something on sale at uh, Costco. I'll pick it up. Uh, yes, as soon as this um, last song is sung... I will fire up a fat bowl. I make I make bongs out of bottles, out of liquor bottles. Check out the uh, Stones Company on Instagram for reels. I wonder if I have a link to it I can share real fast. I didn't even get to talk about the fights. You guys watch the fights? We're over an hour, but I don't care. Oh, we're going to do it. I think it's here. Can I do it? What happened? Ah, well, that's on my, uh, it's from the website. So you'll see some. Here are some of my stones. Toke stones. I like the, I like the, oh, there you go. It looks like a toe. <laughs> oh, I didn't. She's not sharing. There you go. There you go. See the toe? So these are uh, <clears throat> on my website. But the Stones Company on Instagram also. <sighs> oh, I should just do this. Take it right to it, guys. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, here's one of the bottles. You see the bottle? I make these. <laughs> here's another one. Angel's Envy. So these are some of my uh, works of art. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, spice sides, yeah, they're good, man. I mean, I like I like the smoky PD um, Islay ones, Highlands. I'm starting to taste some of the Highlands. They're good, man. I'm uh, enjoying myself. I I don't know. <laughs> I went to the, uh, the whatever my the clinic. Uh, I can't remember. Maybe I don't know if that's from that or because I just forget things. 
Like I don't, I really don't know. I've had I've always had a trouble with the, people's names. I've always had trouble remembering certain things, but that like I, they come back to me. I don't know. One fifty two sophomore year. Yeah, dude. The teenage years is like hard. You grow a lot. I had an uncle who grew a foot, a whole foot in a year. In six months, he grew <laughs> 12 inches. Like, that's wild. That was in high school. So, yeah, so he had some troubles. Like, you got to get used to your body and shit, man. Nate's, Nate's long, but he's also brain damaged. I think he's been damaged. I don't think his chin is there. I think his head is there. I don't. I don't think he's he's fight capable. His body's there anymore. I I pick a lot of stuff that's in the fifteen to forty dollar range. That that that's where that's what I'm looking for. This was fifteen, right? This one was probably like thirty something. No big whoops. <clears throat> Try to keep it respectable. I don't mean yeah. There's some stuff that's good that's fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, but like man, it's not much. It's honestly not much better than the thirty dollar bottles. That's my take on it. I do notice a major difference between your typical $30 bottle of whiskey versus, you know, even a, a Jameson, you know, a cheaper, a cheaper bottle. So, yeah, I can definitely taste the difference. Yeah, Pippa looked great the other night. <clears throat> Gracie lost. It's tough. Pippa and AJ, this is going to be a great fight because AJ has uh, st strategical abilities. Pippa is a monster, though. He's not, he's not shabby on the ground. AJ... Man, he has potential to beat them, beat him, and win this fight. But I don't know. I could see AJ losing a close or great fight, a good fight, fun fight for us to watch. You know, coming back and then beating him a second time. But then if Pitbull wins, how many fights he got left on his contract? He's probably gonna want to go to UFC. You know. Hmm. My scotch is revered in my garage in my home. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Uh, that's a good tell. <clears throat> is I'm usually sipping on some whiskey during a show, and uh, if I make mistakes, you know they would they would come out a lot more pronounced. While I'm uh, talking to y'all, am I right or am I wrong? I think so, and I think you're right. Uh, be sick. So yeah. Did you guys, you guys get the point tonight? Playing to win. You understand what I'm saying? Playing to win. There's a lot of there's a lot of this black pill. MGTOW. Bullshit. Okay? I'm sorry. I don't have any feelings. The game, does, the game is rigged. It's hard. Life is hard. It's never been easy. It's never been easy. It's never been easy to get certain things. Like, there was never... You're never going to get in a time machine and be like, oh, man, like, all the shit I wish I could have had, it's, it's here. It's at this time. I'm going to go back in time. I'm going to get it. It didn't exist. You're fooling yourself. So this like, oh, I'm I'm not tall enough. I don't have a I don't have a, a butt chin, whatever thing. I can't grow a beard. I don't have whatever this. Uh, so life's pointless. I shouldn't even try. I'm just gonna play video games. Get the fuck out of here. You're making up excuses. You're really making up excuses. You're making up some really shitty excuses to why 
you should just be okay with being a loser. It's fine that I don't try. It's fine that I don't care. I just want to hang on. I just want to hang on to my shitty life as long as I can until I die alone. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Gotta get to work, man. It's never been easy. It's not going to be easy. I don't have it easy. I'm never going to have it easy. I'm playing to win. I'm not playing to get by. I'm not playing just to... Oh, fuck. I'm playing just to get some land and retire and never talk to anybody again. Sorry. I like the smell of females on my sheets. Rumble or Romero? I don't know, man. <sighs> oh, it's a tough one. Yeah, I love them both, but I like Rumble. He's more used to that weight class. And he's a bigger dude. All right, man. He says, uh, if you were granted one rematch in your prime, who would it be and why GSP? <laughs> He's got it. Yeah, that's the one. There's three on the list. GSP, Damian Maya, and uh, Johnny Hendricks. In my prime, I think my prime, the best I ever was, I think, was the second Tiago Alves fight. Because I was working towards... Fixing all the holes, getting another fight with Tiat with uh, GSP. I won another fight with GSP, and that was what I was gonna. That was gonna get me there. I beat them, won that fight, and I was supposed to fight him. I think that was the best, uh, best I've ever performed, and I was ready to go to big places, but then I lost my mind. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Gotcha. Gotcha. I did get the point. You successfully made me feel guilty for not stepping my game up. And guys, like, a lot of the stuff I tell you, I'm telling you because I'm telling myself. I'm telling myself. Like, I need to step my game up. I need to play to win. There's a lot of stuff left to do still. There's a lot of things to conquer. We've been convinced in this modern era that we shouldn't conquer and conquest and defeat and get people to submit at our feet and worship our greatness. Why? Why? I don't want to live that life. We'll live greatness. Let's do great things. Let's get there. Let's do it. Yeah, I don't like bullying either. What are you talking about? I'm not a fan. There's no such thing as a fighting league. They're all promoters. A league has multiple owners. It's not a league. That's how they're... Uh, that's how... They got you. That's how they fool you. You guys like the new lights? I got some new lights going on. Is it, is it cool? You like it? Crush it at my home gym. Yep. Archery. Digging it. Having fun. I don't want to talk about the uh, the blast and the meat, but uh, I think I've had it. I don't see why I need to. Can I test? I want to test for the uh, whatever the things that say you had it. If I have those, then why, why, why get it? Seems like redundant. All right, guys. 
sing a little song to bring us all together. <laughs> <clears throat> Hope you guys had a good night. I'm had a, I had a great night. It was fun. It's fun talking to you guys. I feel like a crazy person sometimes because I am competitive. I like to win, but I don't. When I was a child, you know, it would it would get to me. I like didn't when I lost. Uh, <laughs> you'd even cheat sometimes. You know, you put a card up your sleeve when you're playing Uno, some shit. You got an extra checker somewhere. You slip it on. King yourself when no one's looking. It happens. Because you don't want to lose. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad feeling. I don't want to. You don't want to stomp that out. Like your kids. Like, oh. Like, the feeling you have to win is good. It's a great feeling to have. But, ah, don't. Don't cheat. Because. Actions have consequences, and you have to deal with consequences. So, play to win. Don't cheat. Or at least don't get caught. <laughs> All right, guys. <clears throat> Making your way in the world today Takes everything you've got Taking a break from all your worries Sure would help a lot Wouldn't you like to get away? All those nights when you got no lights Check is in the mail Angel, little angel Hung up the cat by his tail And your third fiancé didn't show It's where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came You wanna be where you can see Troubles are all the same you wanna go where everybody knows your name. You roll out of bed, Mr. Coffee's dead. Your morning's looking bright. And your shrink ran off to Europe. Fucking did him right And your husband wants to be a girl There's only one place in the world Where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came You wanna go where people know People are all the same you want to go where everybody knows your name. Yeah, because everybody wants to know your name. That's okay. We got 29, 29 watching right now. Uh, I hope all you guys give me the thumbs up, the likes, all that stuff. Anything to win, pretty much. There's winners and there's losers. Cheers. It is. Winners and losers. What, who are you? What are you going to be? I'm going to play one more. That was uh, it was terrible. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for checking in. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>